Ambrose, at this time, we'd like to ask everyone to please turn off or place on silent any electronic devices you may have brought with you so as not to disturb our prayer. We'd also like to welcome all those via live stream who are joining us this morning to celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We'd also like to invite anyone who is new or visiting to St. Ambrose this morning to please stand so that we may welcome you. Is there anyone new or visiting to St. Ambrose or maybe hasn't been here in a while? Let's just come back to join us. Welcome to St. Ambrose. And now we would ask that everyone please stand and join us in singing our gathering song, It's For the Beauty of the Earth. It's located on the front of your worship aid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let's see. It's not hot. It isn't windy. The winds will come. There's no smoke here today. The fires are still burning, but we're spared, and the earthquake was two nights ago, so flood. I didn't think of flood, but we don't have a uh, reservoir above us, so we probably won't have a flood today. But while we are relatively safe here, we know that there are people across the state, all the way up the coast. There are people across the nation that are, and around the world, certainly, that are subject to all of those different things who are um, at risk today. And people who are hungry, people who are oppressed. And we come together today to bring all of humanity to the altar. We represent all of humanity today as we come to pray. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we've been asked today to remember especially Beverly Tong, who is deceased. So let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. To all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippines, to the Philippians. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. The 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you too, go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too, go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last ones worked only in one hour and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, my friend, I am not cheating you. you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm sorry that I uh, started in such a cheery way, remembering so many calamities that can fall upon us. But there are others. There are people right now who are ill with the coronavirus, the thing that we all fear and try to avoid. It seems to settle into the background sometimes. It's just become part of our existence. There are those who are having serious surgery today for cancer, for so many other conditions. There are those who are limited to their homes, unable to go out. There are those who are sick with all kinds of illnesses. And I can go on those with difficulty in marriages, those with fear for the loss of income from their work that's been closed up, closed up. All these things. But here we are. Those people who are suffering with Christ are paying the cost like Paul did, like all the apostles did, like so many before us have, and as some of us have done at times as well. But we come in and without working perhaps the full day, we are welcomed by God. 
each one of us receives the mercy and the grace that we need. We've experienced it, and we count on it. But we must always maintain that unity with all the rest of humanity, that we carry them in our hearts and lift them up to the Lord. We're not beat down by the realization that there is so much difficulty in the world but we are lifted up in, the fa in our faith in the resurrection and that Christ has overcome death and suffering and holds open for us that unity with his Father in the love that the Father and the Son share. Today, let's count our blessings and thank God for them. That's what the Eucharist means, the work of thanksgiving. We praise God today, and we appeal to him for his mercy, and he will answer. He will not leave us alone. Whatever we face, Jesus walks with us carrying his cross. And whatever we face in Christ leads us to eternal life. Now that unity in prayer and in heart does not relieve us from unity in sharing materially with people. We need always to consider the needs of the poor. So take stock of that as well. Some of us are hurting financially right now, but of what we have, can we give some for those who have less than us? Might be a small bit. But remember the parable of the widow's might. Whatever tiny little bit we can add to the fund that goes to serve the poor, the Lord will bless that and make it overflow. Please stand. And let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in our Father's great love for us, let us turn to him with our prayers for our own needs 
and the needs of all the world. For all those who suffer today from illness and injury, especially those who are near death, that the Lord may fill them with his love and lift their hearts to his own. We pray for Pope Francis and for all the bishops as they proclaim the gospel today, and especially for all those who proclaim the gospel under the threat of persecution. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are suffering from lack of income, lack of work, lack of food, lack of housing, that they may find in us good friends and neighbors, and through us be reassured of God's love and care, we pray. For Emma and Furman Halili, who are ill, and for all those who are ill, that the Lord's healing grace may be with them, we pray. And for Beverly Tong and all those who have died, especially those we now remember. For all these, we pray to the Lord. And for our nation, as we walk through this election season, that we may be guided by God's commandment to love our neighbor as ourselves, that we may make prudent decisions and be guided by the Holy Spirit in choosing who we will elect. We pray to the Lord. Father, hear all the prayers we lay before you today, those we have spoken and those which only your spirit can speak from deep within our hearts. Help us always to rejoice in your care for us and to share your love with all we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, and all who lead your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that it should have me under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you, to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you, sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separate from you I 
to know the Lord and to bear his cross so to wear the crown he wore let your heart be glad always glad in the Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have two announcements. One is, uh, again, to remind you that we have a uh, virtual retreat coming up on October 10th. See how happy they are out there? They're coming right away. October 10th at 9 a.m. I want to say a later time always, but at 9 a.m. From about 9 until noon, um, we will have, have this, uh, we'll have a Zoom meeting and that 
will be the retreat. We'll have speakers from um, Father Austin Doran in San Gabriel, Father Brian Doran, his brother, who was once our associate pastor here. They're determined to get me. And Father Ken Deasy, who uh, is in Hawaii, a pastor in Hawaii at this point. But by the miracle of Zoom, we can all be together. So um, you'll, we'll tell you more about it as we get closer. Um, you can find information on our website. And uh, you can always give me a call if you have any questions. Um, the other thing is, sunset is getting earlier. So starting next Sunday, we will not have a 6 p.m. Mass. It will be at 5 p.m. And that will at least get us through October. Um, and then we'll have to figure out what we're doing from there on. Um, we may have candlelight Masses or something. Hopefully, and keep this in your prayers, hopefully we'll be able to return to the church before too long. Um, because we need to be there. We need some shelter as, as we get into the weather of the year. Keep in your hearts all those who need our support. Always when we suffer, we can call on the Lord to ask him to let that suffering be united with the Christ and bring grace to someone who especially needs it that moment, that day. And be united that way in our hearts and in our prayers with Christ. And um, we, you know, we don't take a collection as such at this Mass, but there are the wicker baskets at the gates um, for, your, for any donations that you want to give. You can give online. There's a QR code in the um, worship aid that will link you right to the online giving. Or you can uh, link to it through our website. Oh, and any papers or anything that you brought with you or that, you, that we gave you, please take, if you're not taking it home, the trash cans are at the gates. So please um, take it all there. We could use some help with sanitizing the chairs uh, after Mass. So anyone that would like to help the greeters with that, just meet ov over here t towards that uh, drinking fountain. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord in our lives. See